Thanks, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Mike Ruiz. I'm a solutions architect here at AWS. And today we're going to talk about DevOps on the AWS cloud. I have a couple of co-presenter here, co-presenters here today. Brian Knotts is the chief scientist and SVP of applied research at Elucian, and I have Sri Vasareddy, who's a founder at RainCloud, an AWS partner that helps uh, customers build DevOps solutions on the AWS cloud and really take advantage of everything that AWS has to offer in the area of DevOps. The first thing we probably need to do is define web uh, is to define DevOps. Um, so probably the easiest way to start a conversation in, in my cube is to ask anyone at all to, to try to define DevOps, and you're going to hear a lot of different answers. And I think, I think the reason is because there's a lot of different ways to use the tooling provided by AWS and, and to use kind of existing or, or legacy practices on-prem to build a DevOps workflow that's successful. So we have a lot of folks that, that are doing DevOps and a lot of folks that are doing DevOps in different ways and having success. And, and I think that's the story that I, that I see most often on Amazon Web Services, that we have lots of folks um, who've worked out successful practices using the tooling that we provide, um, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. And, and I think it's really useful to have Rain and Elucia and here um, here on the call today to describe how exactly they've done it. I think a lot of folks are really interested um, and they, they may understand that there's a lot of different ways to do it, but they really want to understand in, in detail um, a nice prescriptive way that, that they're ensured to have success. So AWS has uh, attempted to define DevOps and kind of landed on this, dev, uh, on this uh, operational definition on our new DevOps landing page. I'll just read it out for you. That DevOps is the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. And I really want to um, uh, focus on that last word there, high velocity. Velocity is uh, increasingly our application developers are being asked to produce applications, make changes, deliver features, enable new services um, in the service of, uh, in, of building business value, of delivering value back to the business, of serving our customer base. Our customers are increasingly, we're seeing our customers um, uh, demanding more and more features at a higher and higher rate of change. And so the developers are attempting to deliver this. And really the only way to do that is to increase the, the rate and the pace of application delivery. Um, the issue, of course, is that our op stacks need to come along with us. So as our developers are building and producing more code, trying to deploy that code into production, we need to adjust our operational paradigms to accommodate this, this higher velocity. Of course, uh, as we deliver these new features and, and this additional business value by delivering um, updated code, we also need to maintain really high standards around stability. Um, the applications need to be just as performant as they used to be. Um, with high velocity, we, that can be really challenging. And obviously, in the cloud, we're also going to want to pay very careful attention to security. And so even though we have a higher rate of change, uh, we still need to uh, deliver very high operational um, stability, and we also need to deliver on the promise of security in the cloud. So how do we do that? So AWS has a lot of tools, um, and tooling specifically to enable DevOps workflows um, in the cloud. Um, you'll see here this page is, uh, describes our code commit or our, our code star family of products. Um, code commit is a uh, private Git repository, so you can use all of your same uh, all of your existing uh, Git tooling and have access to a, a fully managed repository hosted on AWS. Code deploy is how we actually deploy assets and objects, artifacts that are compiled um, onto the compute tier. And AWS Code Pipeline is the method we use to orchestrate these, um, uh, the motion. So by using AWS Code Commit, AWS Code Deploy, and AWS Code Pipeline, we can build continuous delivery and continuous integration pipelines using fully managed services on the AWS cloud. Uh, so where do we actually place these objects? We're going to need to place them on a compute tier. And of course, we can always use uh, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or Amazon EC2. So AWS has been continually iterating, continually improving, and reducing the cost of virtual server hosting um, on the AWS platform since we released the product in 2006. And that's really still a great place um, to decompute on AWS and, and to build your DevOps practice. The, uh, of course, by using EC2, we're going to have a, an infrastructure that we can describe as code. 
so that we can really marry the application uh, configuration with the infrastructure configuration, bundle in the networking configuration, build a security policy that's tightly aligned with the needs of those applications, so we can really deliver on stability and security while, while increasing velocity. Um, if your DevOps practice is, real, is more organized or, or you're, you're consolidating around a, a containerization or a Docker service, you can use the Amazon EC2 container service called Amazon ECS. We're pretty excited about that service. It's relatively new, but we're really adding new features all the time and uh, increasing it and, and adding additional integration in with the rest of the, EC, of the Amazon AWS ecosystem. And then finally, if you don't really want to manage the infrastructure at all, if you've got a jar or a container uh, that you can use to encapsulate your application, you can use AWS Beanstalk uh, to do that for you. And so we're going to upload your application to AWS Beanstalk. Uh, then AWS will handle scale in, scale out, um, get the right load balancer in place to manage your, um, your application. So really the story with, with this slide is there's lots of different ways to do compute on AWS, lots of different ways to accelerate that application delivery, um, increase the, um, the rate of change, while still using um, software-defined networking, software-defined infrastructure, and keeping everything safe, performant, and reliable. Uh, moving away from uh, kind of the more explicit compute tiers, um, Amazon has additional services to help you do common tasks that we might find in DevOps. So it's pretty common these days for uh, services to be exposed through an API gateway of some sort, even internal services. So um, when we start to build microservice, when we start to decouple our applications, build microservices in, in the service of, of kind of this velocity. So we might do this to make, you know, to break our monolithic application down into, into kind of more consumable, uh, consumable chunks so we can iterate on services faster. We might like to make those available through gateways. And so um, gateways can actually be fairly tricky to run. They, they can be fairly tricky to scale and to make secure. Um, often we'll want to do metering uh, through gateways. The Amazon API gateway service is designed to deliver all of those features at any scale as a native, as a native and well-integrated AWS service. Um, also interesting for kind of decoupled or microservices infrastructures or for state management of decoupled applications is AWS Lambda. So as we decompose applications or build uh, lifecycle management into our applications, um, often we do that with cron or job management on, on our compute tier. Very often Amazon EC, uh, EC2. Um, instead, we can upload functions or you know, even more complex than, than kind of the functional level into the AWS Lambda service and then invoke code uh, that we're going to pay for by the second and that where the scaling is handled, the load balancing is all handled by the Lambda service itself. So I see this um, employed in DevOps in places where we might have a server that's running cron. Maybe the only function of that server is to run cron jobs and other scheduled tasks. We can upload those tasks, decompose them, and run them as individual Lambdas that we're either going to schedule or trigger. Another common use case um, might be uh, if I have some sort of job engine or work engine, uh, let's say that a user is uploading an image into Amazon S3, I can have S3 event Lambda and do some conversion. Maybe I'd like to make a thumbnail. Um, whereas I would, in the past, I would have had to use EC2 to do that function. Today, I can use AWS Lambda to, to do that same function and, and not worry about scaling and paying by the CPU second rather than, the, rather than by the hour. And then finally, to deliver all this content to the edge, to get the content out to the users, I have, we have a, a global CDN service called Amazon CloudFront. This can offload a significant amount of, of uh, kind of web management and, and asset delivery by consuming the display managed service. Then finally, I really don't have anything if I don't have governance and compliance. So I mentioned that um, even though we're accelerating the rate of change and we have more and more change in the environment, um, I, it's st I still need to enable accountability. I still need to enable security. AWS Config is a service that allows us to have resource inventory in real time and historical um, inventories to compare to our existing or, or real time stack, as well as change notification. So governance um, with DevOps can be a challenge. We have lots of folks that we're going to enable to do you know, the full stack. We're going to enable them to build, we're going to enable them to test, and we're going to enable them to deploy in production. Um, so we really need a, a, a great story around governance. Um, Rain is going to talk a little bit about that and a little bit about how they help with that piece. And AWS Config is a service that really allows you to dig in on that. 
Um, imagine an environment where I have all of my, my, my compute, I have all of my storage, I have all of my networking, and I have all of my security policy all in one place and available with the click of a button. Um, AWS CloudTrail is another really important piece for compliance and accountability. This is a full record of all AWS activity. Um, all of the API calls um, are recorded, stored in an S3 bucket, and available for review. So we can create um, inviolate um, records of all of the use of our account from anywhere in the world um, at the API call, that level of granularity, including all of the arguments. So if we're concerned with abuse, we can, we can build automation around CloudTrail to make sure that the environment remains compliant. We can also use CloudTrail for other automated tasks that are interesting for DevOps workflows as well. And then finally, we need to have a visible and highly performant architecture. Part of that story is Amazon CloudWatch. We have a, that's a service that enables monitoring, uh, building alerts around metrics, and setting up dashboards. So you have excellent visibility into the application health and the health of the infrastructure on AWS. And of course, we have more than 40 other, other we have more than 40 other services that can also be used to enable DevOps. So the story is here: we have a variety of compute, a great um, security story. Uh, we have lots of different ways to deploy code and manage code and push that code in, and make it uh, make it live, push it into production. Uh, lots of different um, services around uh, quote unquote serverless compute or microservices architectures. Lots of tools to enable DevOps workflow, workflows. And now I'm going to hand it over to Brian to discuss how he's actually used these tools to build a, a highly performant DevOps workflow on AWS. Thank you, <clears throat> uh, Mike. And uh, thank you, AWS and uh, Rain, for having me today. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, as Mike said, sort of a practical um, approach to how we, we went about our, our transformation. And really the key word here is transformation. This was a really big project for us. We, uh, a little bit about Elucian. So <clears throat> we have a very traditional on-premise ERP suite. Um, so this is kind of where we started. And uh, as our owners uh, progressed through, you know, we had uh, our, our company was divested originally and uh, sent over to SunGuard, from SunGuard. And so one of the big things we got started on was a cloud strategy. So when you see how many students we have here, we have about 18 million students that use our applications. We have 24 institutions. Um, and we are uh, all over the world. And one of the things is that moving to kind of the cloud is we, we can take what we're going to talk about today and be able to expand it anywhere in the world very quickly with this DevOps and cloud ops approach. So we're in a transition and a transformation across the whole business. So a key thing we narrowed in on very quickly was the whole DevOps approach. And so as we got involved with Amazon, we started with the, dev, uh, with the uh, test drive approach. And um, from there, we found uh, Rain, which I'm going to talk a little bit, bit more about. But we have about 18 million students that we service, and again, largely on-premise. So let's talk a little bit more about the relationship. So we did start working with them in mid-2014 uh, on a test drive, which is a program that AWS has. You can find out a little bit more about that if you, uh, if you Google a, uh, AWS test drive, you'll find out. And so that's where we met Rain. And one of the things that uh, we needed to do with our investors and with our, our business in general is we had to move very rapidly um, through this cloud strategy because we, as you can imagine, having a lot of on-premise applications, shipping products every you know six months to a year, we had a major amount of work to do in a short period of time. So after we finished kind of the test drive approach, we put one of our applications up uh, on AWS, our CRM application. Um, we kind of was getting kind of our high level strategy in place and we discovered that we really wanted to move very hard at the uh, DevOps that uh, was described a, a little bit earlier. So <clears throat> um, being that we had such a good relationship with Rain, we, you know, they were there for us in every step of the way on the test drive. We decided, when I decided to move forward with the DevOps stuff, we again had a very tight timeline. It was as much as three months we had to have three of our applications on 
uh, on a DevOps uh, pipeline. So we really needed help and we needed it quick. And we, we turned to Rain again for them to, uh, to help us accelerate this. And I would strongly recommend that if you're doing a DevOps approach, get somebody to help you with it uh, early on because there's a lot to get into. And I think mixing in experts in the field along with your folks is a much, much better way. And I do this in lots of the parts of our business uh, in different aspects, and this has proven to be a very successful way to do this. And it can move quick. You kind of, you know, have sort of a combination between a consulting company and and your own uh, your business. And, uh, you know, essentially that was in the middle, early part of 2015, and we're still um, sort of uh, using the RAIN resources to help supplement. Because after we kind of got a lot of the knowledge transfer and we got our, our stuff in place, then we just had a lot of products. We have over 130 of them that we have to move to, uh, to the DevOps approach. So what I wanted to include here was a slide on one way to think about it as a business. The first thing you got to think about is it's not just a technical problem to solve. It's not just the technology, you know, the current technology. And DevOps is a super uh, hot technology. Some would argue it's even hotter than security. But let's just say it's about the same as security. So it's a very hot commodity, very hard to find these individuals. They're in very high demand. But uh, we also realized that we had sort of a transformation of the entire business. And we had some other problems that are listed here on the slide. I won't go through either each of these items, but you know, we needed to improve our quality. Um, uh, we really were changing our overall company business model. So the way we sell, sell, so let me say maybe from a license model to a subscription model, um, the operational efficiency, uh, we definitely were spending a lot of money moving products around and then moving them out into the field. And also our customers, you know, were installing these products and upgrading them. Large uh, technical uh, 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 advisory group help desk type of stuff. So all that stuff really gets, gets affected. And at the same time, you know, the market's moving. Our competitors are moving to the cloud. Some of them are natively in the cloud so, um, or, or started out their businesses in the cloud. Um, and uh, there was a whole new set of technologies that were associated, for example, with, with the DevOps stuff, and we'll get into a few of those as we go. So it wasn't just a technology transformation, it was also a biz business transformation, and, it, and we really were, you know, what would be bad for us is to move a couple of products there and then move a couple of products, uh, you know, a quarter. So we really had a, a, an adoption problem, and that's where, where Rain came in to help us. Um, another quick piece of this is you need to think about this kind of in three phases, or at least we did, and we were pretty successful with that. So we started out with the planning phase, and that again was not just the technologies and what tools we picked, but how is this going to work throughout the entire business? Um, how is the business going to be impacted? Because it doesn't do you any good to have a working uh, pipeline and not have you know, the business ready to, to try to catch up to that. Um, and then we moved into an implementation phase, and as we started to do that, this is where really our cloud operations team came on, on board who sort of takes delivery and runs, as you know, runs your applications in the cloud. So those two organizations have to be fused together. In some ways, they accept the work that comes uh, through and set the standards for what the work needs to look like once it ends up in the cloud. So there's a lot here on the slide, but, but really come away from this saying there is a planning phase. And it wasn't months long. I mean, for us, it was just really a few days with me. We set this up. We had Sri, who's going to talk here um, in a minute or has been talking. And basically, we were able to do this very fast, but this is the way we kind of thought about it. And we're pretty much in our operation phase now. Sri, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Um, thank you. Mike and Brian. Um, so thank you all for joining the uh, presentation today. So at Rain, what we do is, uh, you know, really help organizations conceive their idea of basically transforming their business with DevOps as a methodology. And there are lots of benefits to doing that, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. But a quick profile of our organization, we are a cloud-native um, company focused on Amazon Web Services. 
Uh, we're about 150 employees and growing fast. Uh, we focus a lot on uh, certifications. Um, 80 plus of them are certified. You can see 8 plus are professional. There are a handful that have hold all certifications, which I'm told are uh, very rare, uh, probably in, in single digit numbers in the world. Um, but it's the, you know, in addition to DevOps, there are you know, probably several other companies that do DevOps. But where we really differentiate ourselves is the enterprise and security focus that we bring to DevOps. Um, TechTarget uh, did a survey of the modern cloud service providers and they ranked us number one in the DevSecOps services. And that's based on our customers um, like Illusion giving feedback about our services. And uh, Brian has been touching about cloud ops after we do DevOps, um, the 24 by 7 monitoring um, you know, automation of that is a follow-on service that we provide to our customers. So we have a lot of uh, competencies. Amazon uh, awards partners, competencies that are about 24,000 odd partners worldwide. Um, about 45 of them are uh, considered premier consulting partners uh, based on the services that we provide, the customers we serve, the scale at which we serve, and, and all that. And out of those 45, there are about 10 or so that are DevOps certified partners. Out of those, um, there are you know less than a handful or maybe one or two uh, at best that are premier DevOps managed services certified and life sciences competency certified. So as a part of managed services certification, Amazon does a yearly certification, making sure that we're living up to the uh, right standards and really managing in the new modern way of doing things and not the legacy way of doing things, which includes using a lot of tools that Mike talked about, like automating everything ground up, constantly monitoring your cloud trail alerts, acting on them in an automated fashion, giving the right visibility into what we uh, what is happening in your environment is all the things that we have over time codified our practices and we bring to the table um, to allow you to move fast. That you know what would have normally taken a much longer time and how we were able to compress that and move fast with Illusion is one example of that. Um, in general, our service offering customers come to us. Um, enterprise customers want to know the return on investment and the business case justification. Um, you know, and then we kind of uh, give them a more um, you know, a strategic um, view of what the timeline looks like uh, in terms of adoption, how they can mitigate the risk. In, in uh, most cases, we focus on um, a principle that no organization should compromise um, on their policies. It's our job to make them uh, meet those policies with the goal to improve the security posture. Um, disaster recovery and business continuity, and we'll talk a little bit more about reliability and why cloud and DevOps really is the, um, you know, is a game changer in that space. And, uh, uh, you know, in the end, providing the you know, DevOps strategy so they can take advantage of all the customer responsiveness and uh, stability, reliability uh, that, you know, that they can achieve. And even though, um, you know, we most customers, some you know, they don't have to start with this whole portfolio. Uh, some customers already have a running um, environment, and they realize that they have uh, not quite taken advantage of all the things. Like for example, if you've moved to Amazon, um, you know, three years ago, um, the concept of multi-account, multi-VPC, VPC peering, where you can have a control account and build your app or business accounts and VPCs, it might seem like a daunting task, but We've automated it in such a way that it's very consistent and reliable and secure way of deploying. And that's, it's really only when you embrace DevOps, it feels that way. Otherwise, it feels like a nightmare. It's our job to make it easy uh, for our customers. Um, so one thing when it comes to DevOps, or I guess two things, um, is measurement and visualization. Uh, if, if you are if, if you're adopting DevOps and you are not clearly able to measure your success and visualize it, report it, create dashboards out of it, 
then you really need to rethink um, how serious you are about DevOps. Because one of the greatest things that DevOps provides is this ability. I'm showing you an example of your code moving from integration to staging to production and the multiple steps involved in it. And this is a simple pipeline. But each step, you can know exactly which, where, which one failed, which one took how long. And over time, you need to be able to trend and figure out how you can improve certain deployments. You need to be able to answer questions about um, which pipelines are breaking, um, you know, what are the behaviors, um, you know, what code check-ins are breaking them, what is the quality of the code moving through the pipeline, uh, how frequently you're deploying. All that being able to measure and visualize is very critical um, to incentivize your resources as well as to measure your success in terms of being responsive to your customers. Um, so the two you know, measures at a highest level are throughput measures and stability measures. Throughput measures are uh, you know, how frequently you're deploying. It, it leads to how fast um, you're responding to your customers and what is the lead time uh, between each deployment. Um, you know, before starting Rain, I was with Amazon Web Services. I was the first worldwide public sector solutions architect with Amazon. And uh, I used to, you know, come across these incidents which are just, you know, I, I will never forget. When you go to uh, conferences and present at conferences, I randomly have a developer walk, walk up to me and say, hey, uh, you know, I, I posted something on the forum and it got fixed the next day. And the reason organizations like Amazon um, are really so high performing is because of the rate at which they move changes to be responsive to their customers. You will absolutely find happier customers uh, when you do that. And also, you know, as a part of moving small changes more frequently, your confidence level in moving changes um, improves a whole lot. At the same time, your stability increases a whole lot. So your mean time to recover is much smaller. So, uh, uh, you know, if you look at these organizations like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, you know, when you talk to their customers, it's very um, consistent in the sense that they like the reliability, they like the stability, they like the security, and most importantly, they like the customer responsiveness that these organizations offer. You know, being faster and responsive to customers automatically means gaining more market share. For example, before using DevOps and uh, cloud, Netflix was taking about roughly nine months to enable their app on a new device um, that came on the market, um, like a Sony player or something like that. But after moving, they cut it down to two months. So imagine that kind of responsiveness um, adds net new customers. Uh, because they are first on the market to offer their app on that device. And so uh, it's, it's very good for business growth. Now, I want you to pay attention to this graph. So what you see here on the right-hand side is this wait time goes, shoots up drastically when you see a resource gets busy above 80%. It's interesting in life, like uh, until some point, everything is fine, and then all hell breaks loose, right? So, and this busy resource can be people, process, or technology. For example, um, if you are, if you are hitting, let's say, a operations um, situation, and you're running around for that one person that you need to track down that has the knowledge most likely that one person is very busy on something else. Right? A lot of knowledge uh, locked in people's heads really you know, makes things, they're busy, and because they're not able to respond to some you know, events, it causes wait times and delays in moving to operations or fixing problems in an operation. From a process perspective, in general, you know, Developers 
take a long time or you know they're busy working and you know it's not their fault you know every time we want to try to shoot for more so you're pressed to add more features and in the end you leave very little time for security to complete their testing so from a process perspective it looks as if security is coming and delaying everything but what if you change that and move bake security into your pipelines, make security as a part of your daily build process, daily development process. Then it removes that wait time or block at the end of the process. Technology, uh, from a developer perspective, as the business is requesting you to add more features, then you, you need more resources, uh, more instances, more environments to parallelize your testing. Sometimes you're blocked because, you're, you're, because of your inability to create click button, create an environment. Let's say you have one test environment. What if each developer can get their own test environment for a few minutes and hours that they need, test their um, you know, code, and move on? Right? DevOps basically unblocks all these things. It helps you codify the knowledge of people into automated testing, automated deployments, uh, bake in security into the pipelines and give you the ability to click and launch a lot of environments that you can shut down when you don't need and get you know be cost effective so these high performing organizations just uh, if you look at it the you know there if you look at Amazon this is two years ago I believe today they're got uh, don't have a published metric for them today but I've I read some some posts that uh, I was able to calculate down to about 70,000 deployments a day. Um, and the lead time, perhaps it's in, in seconds now, right? Um, but you can see that they're very highly reliable, highly uh, responsive. If you move down the chart, as you, know, as you come down and you can question and see most likely your deployment times are, you know, I think if you're doing weeks, it's really good. Um, you may be doing months or years. Right? If, there is a clear opportunity to move up the scale. Uh, you don't have to try to shoot for minutes uh, on day one, but I think slowly progressing to once a month um, and then slowly moving up to weeks and days uh, would be very beneficial. You will see the developer satisfaction go up, business uh, responsiveness go up, customer's responsiveness go up, and it just makes a very healthy organization. I want to address some myths about DevOps. People think that DevOps replaces Agile. Uh, that's not true. Actually, DevOps ag augments Agile um, because most of the time, your Agile cycles at the end of your sprint, you, your definition of done is code is complete. But what if you can move to delivery done? That's what DevOps enables. DevOps replaces ITIL. You know, if you look at ITIL, more and more you will see ITIL um, requesting focus on automation. What DevOps really gives is that ability to automate everything, uh, in, including infrastructure as code. DevOps means no ops. Well, I wish DevOps means no ops, meaning I don't need people. Machines can do anything uh, and everything. Um, I think that is, that is far from reality. Uh, you know, uh, it, it always requires people to attend to events. Uh, you can optimize with machines, but I think it can only go so far. Um, the DevOps is only for open source software, not true at all. Our large organizations, uh, we've worked through the test drive program, ERP applications, SAP applications, a turnkey deployment of those, and or turnkey push of code changes. Uh, in those cases, maybe a little bit more challenging with the databases and all that, but still you can net gain a lot of um, you know, time by at least automating your deployment, uh, if not delivery. The um, infrastructure as code um, automation, that, that is integral, that is very critical, that really moves the DevOps, uh, but uh, you know, it is not the only thing. And then uh, it's only for startups and unicorns is no longer true either because um, you know, the, uh, if you look at the S&P 500 tenure, um, it, has, it is coming down drastically because these cloud native organizations are able to move so fast and become a bigger threat for um, larger enterprises, and it, it, it therefore is important uh, for larger enterprises to adopt DevOps to be able to compete with the, um, you know, with the new organizations. The, uh, 
you know, I'm trying to move a little bit, um, being sensitive to time here. Um, so fundamentally, from this framework perspective, we want, um, you know, you really need to focus on test automation. That's very critical to DevOps. Leverage the infrastructure as code principles that allows you to do end-to-end -end automation of delivery, and then do it in incremental pieces and treat everything as code um, and codify your knowledge. Those factors help you improve your innovation and delivery, and it automatically, um, you know, shows itself in reducing this um, mean time to uh, recovery and, uh, you know, reduced work in progress and high-performing organizations. Um, so, you know, most of, uh, you may have seen many of these benefits that cloud and DevOps op, um, enables, like the uh, no upfront fee, it's OpEx, uh, low cost of operation, um, and then you pay for only what you use. You can spin up any number of environments as long as you're uh, inefficient and shutting them down at the end of use. But what I'm going to really focus on is this programmatic deployment and scale up and down and the agility aspect of it. Um, so one of the things that cloud, especially Amazon Web Services, um, you know, brings to bear is this integration of these three awesome services. Like in, the, in the middle, I have a, 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 an application, a pool of servers that are sitting behind a load balancer. Um, you know, uh, Mike talked about CloudWatch. Um, the elastic load balancer, which in itself is elastic, it can grow and shrink, it's constantly feeding input about the health check to the servers into CloudWatch. The servers themselves feed CPU, memory, network, and your custom metrics, you can put number of uh, requests per second into CloudWatch. And then you set a threshold saying, if I reach 70% CPU utilization on this pool, out of scale, trigger another server. When that triggers, it informs load balancer, and you, you will automatically see the fleet grow. And then you can again set a threshold to sync these servers if the threshold goes below 40% and stays there for five minutes. Um, that way, you are just programming like a thermostat, you know, that, you know, that temperature that you want to operate at, that, you know, the capacity that you want to operate at without, you know, without having to worry about adding more fleet to your, um, servers to your fleet. Now, from a reliability perspective, Amazon offers its services in regions. Each region has multiple data centers. We talked about disaster recovery and, um, and, and coop. So when you start a server, let's say U.S. East region is Northern Virginia, uh, take the Dallas Airport area, there are about six availability zones around that region. You start your applications in one availability zone. Each time you take a backup of that application, the Amazon Simple Storage Service is inherently built to replicate those snapshots to three regions, uh, sorry, three availability zones. And you can spin up another instance in that, in the new availability zone, and you can put a load balancer behind it, um, in front of it, and then you have a highly available application working. Um, let's say you needed a large server and use uh, to run your workload and you split that up into two small servers, uh, you pay the same and you still take advantage of this high availability. Now put that in auto scale, like we talked about, you get not just high availability, but continuous reliability. Because anytime anything happens to a server, auto scale automatically brings it up. Right? Now what we have done to really address the DevSecOps aspect of it is uh, we've built some controls around confidentiality, integrity, and availability using third-party tools above and beyond what Amazon provides, like CloudTrail, security groups, NACLs. We've packaged all these and the best practices using the well-architected framework and created pipelines with built-in test validation and built-in measures on how long it takes for you to build this application in such a way that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. A um, lot of the experience of working with really large organizations like Illusion, global organizations, multiple software workloads, um, you know, we've taken advantage of that experience and packaged it in, in, in a form that we can easily deliver in a DevOps fashion. Brian, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sri. And those I would really recommend you spend more time because it was very limited time we have here and Sri had to get through those, but those are very good uh, slides to study in depth. So I wanted to bring you back and talk just a little bit about what we did um, to wrap up. So 
um, you know, as you know, when you go to DevOps, this is an actual code base. So that's why the term infrastructure is code. You really don't have any human intervention um, in a normal DevOps uh, deployment. So um, we picked these tools, and, and you know, this is another way we were able to really accelerate. I remember the conversation really clearly with uh, with with Sri. Uh, when, when we picked the tools, and a good example was I was asking about Chef, and uh, Sri, I don't know if you remember, but um, he, he said, no, I think we probably ought to use Ansible Tower because it's less verbose. So those are the kinds of things that you could argue whether that, you know, I, I thought that was good, um, but those kinds of tips and tricks to really nail down what your core technologies are going to be for your, uh, uh, for your DevOps is really, you know, time that you could spend in other ways. Um, you could certainly argue about whether Lucy made all the right choices um, or not, but we really needed to make choices. We didn't have time to bake off each particular choice, and there are many, many tools out there and many, many tools emerging. Um, so we were able to really quickly do that. You can see some of the tools there. Um, and then when we talk about the cloud operations side of the house, this is where we can instantly, you know, once an application can be deployed to one of AWS's regions, it can be deployed to regions anywhere in the world. So if you could think about a company that's really depending on global growth, the ability for us to quickly be able to, to uh, um, build our systems worldwide is really one of the big advantages of cloud. If we can't mail all of those experts all over the world to be able to expand our business. So this is not a, a nice to have. This is how our global expansion and our global market will work. And part of the reason why we haven't developed a huge global market is because we can't have those experts all over the world. Um, and then you can see there's lots of other little things, you know, little things that you can pick up from the side. But you get it. This kind of accelerates. The work we did with Rain was really an accelerator. To, to us, and we wouldn't have been able to, to move as quickly as we were. And by the way, we did put those three products up, those three initial products up, including our mobile applications, uh, a couple other applications in three months. And this was really associated with, we had to prove back to our company that we could do this in a rapid fashion. This couldn't be a multiple year project for us to build around whether we could do this or not. We really had tight deadlines. And this is where, uh, you know, again, where Rain really helped us in AWS and their relationship with AWS, their relationship with the industry and the people that make these different tools. Um, <clears throat> as you look at the benefits here, most of them should just make sense. You should be able to read most of these. You're not manually deploying anymore. You're automated. Um, you know, one of the big deliverables that, isn't, that doesn't bleed through in the slide is that the product teams are now directly involved. For many years, they were just sort of like, yeah, we don't know how our software works. We put it on a CD, and you have to talk to somebody else to figure out how it works. By pushing them into the DevOps, and we moved the DevOps ownership, we kind of have a central DevOps tool group and a group that really helps us build the DevOps infrastructure and also do, do the knowledge transfer. But we made it clear to all of our individual development teams across the 130 products that you own your DevOps pipeline and you're responsible for it. So um, this was a big, you know, change. And this really started that movement towards a full stack, you know, full stack engineer approach that now that, that responsibility is, is everywhere. I'm going to move quick because I hope we can get a couple questions in here right before the end. Um, the next slide here is we developed a, uh, this is really an image from a Confluence site where we really broke down the entire chain. And then each one of these was really an active button that you could then go in and read about each of this. And one of the things we did was we created cohorts of study groups of five to ten people, and we ran them through this methodology. Um, and it's our own, you know, it's kind of our own methodology, but obviously this, this is not, should not be a, you know, proprietary thing or anything. These are all um, fairly well-known things. But we kind of broke down this whole process. And before a team would actually move their product onto the DevOps pipeline, they had to have at least some of their participants in their group go through study groups. And they used this as a backdrop. And we have many other artifacts that we've 
we've developed in conjunction with, with RAIN. And so to this day, this really helps people understand, but we didn't want them to kind of go into a very complex process without all the background. So here's what we're kind of doing, and a lot of this is in progress now. Um, you know, one of the things we wanted to do was move some of our products to, to RDS, and really this speaks to, you know, a, a whole other aspect that we didn't cover in a lot of detail is really the, the total cost of ownership. Um, we had a, just a quick funny story is, you know, in the field, you know, to have our full suite of products, you know, someone was saying that it was maybe 10 to 12 people. Um, and what, what our managed services group was really uh, operating on was two people. So somebody said to me, well, two people is a lot better than 12. But that's really not sustainable if you can think about a cloud business, right? You can't, you can't have that. You can't scale and build a cloud business with, with two people taking care of each, each ERP suite and all the associated products. So we really need to get to a leverage where we can take the same team and that team can support, you know, several hundred customers um, at, at a minimum. And really that's kind of one of the, the, the issues there. So what you want to do is that the products that you have that use these, for in this case, a relational service, you got to change it from having kind of a, a, an Oracle database running on a cloud server to a to consuming a relational database server, and in this case, Oracle. So, you know, um, and one of the things that was interesting about that was just all the things that you had to do to comply with that actually made the overall application safer. So you can see some other things there. A lot of it has to do with also making the application scale. If you think about an application running on a, a, a given set of servers, you really not really have to worry about the elasticity. You always had enough power to do whatever you, you were doing. But in the cloud world, you really need to do work, and we had to change architectural stuff, not real hard stuff, but we had to change some stuff, and we were able to use one of the AWS services to hold our, our, our session. So um, really, at the end of the day, it's this simple, that these two components really, and, and Sri hit on this, really translate almost directly, at least from an, uh, an R&D perspective, into a high-performance org. You can't do these without actually um, making that transition. So it's really nice because these technologies actually change the entire culture of, of an organization. So, um, <clears throat> You know, the, the worst, in some ways, the worst thing you could do is to try to approach a cloud, in this case AWS, but I would say any cloud, with the idea that you're going to sort of manually create servers and manually do try to do all this stuff. It's much easier to think about, even in a simplistic way with a very simple application, in that you want to really deal with APIs and DevOps infrastructure to do that. Because once you get into the, the, the position where you're creating servers and all that, this is where you can really get into uh, a problem. Um, you also want to make sure that your DevOps goes out to your entire organization. And what isn't on the slide here, <clears throat> excuse me, is you want to make sure you have a partner to do this because then you can kind of work together with that partner to make a lot of progress in a short period of time before people get kind of like, what are we doing this for? I don't know if we can get this done, etc. You need that big impact uh, quickly. An organization like Rain can help you do that. Um, so, so in any case, um, you really you, these are the things that you really have to master pretty quickly, and you can do you can do these things yourself. But I would really recommend you do these with a partner such as Rain. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, what they're doing here is they're they're making a promotion available um, here to really get you started. So Rain is really willing, and this is a model that they've used. Uh, that's been very successful because sometimes I know I'm a budget, I deal with my budget, sometimes it's a little hard to justify how all this stuff is going to work. Um, this is a great way to, to take advantage of that. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Uh, so those of you who, uh, you know, we, as I said, uh, you know, we are, we are making available uh, for first five uh, prospects that sign a contract with Rain um, a $20,000 value free DevOps migration of one application, which gives you these templates that you could apply to other applications. Uh, so we're really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.
So th this is Mike Rose again. Uh, thank you so much, Brian and Sri, for that presentation. I, th I think that uh, you know we, we have a lot of to tools at AWS, and it's really great to see customers having success and, and Rain having a really prescriptive set of guidance around how to you know deploy kind of a targeted set of tools to, to solve business problems. Thank you so much for attending today, and we'll see some of you tomorrow.